I'm going to try and speak as clearly as I can, but as much as we can, keeping the pumps of sound just so we can all hear. So today we're going to be talking about phonics and what we do at Harris Garrard to help your children to learn to read. So I'm going to start with a quote. It says, teach a child to read and keep that child reading and we will change everything. And I mean everything. Reading underpins everything that your child accesses at school. It is so, so important that we give your children the skills to be able to read so they can access their history, their geography, everything else that they will encounter. And Key Stage 1 and Reception is such a magical, amazing place to give your children the skills that they need to be able to read. So, we make sure that children learn to read from Reception their very first day with us up until Year 2. We also make sure that we catch up children who are older who also need help to be able to access the curriculum. And we make sure that in years five and six, the children that there are behind day where they also are able to catch up to. We make sure that all of the children are taught in reading groups based on their ability. So it will be that children go out with different phonics teachers throughout the day. That's to make sure that their reading is pitched directly and accurately for what they need to be able to do to succeed. So when children first start with us in reception, they are exposed, they learn their sounds. Then they learn to read words and they blend those sounds together. For example, here, they've learned the sounds for s and a and And then they see these green word cards, which you may have heard at home, and they're able to blend them work together. So they know that s and a and together makes the word sat. We then put the children in different groups so they're able to access the words they have learned the sounds for, so they feel really, really confident during their reading. And you will see these books because they're sent home with you. Can you give me a nod if you've seen these books before? Probably lots of you have. They're books that you're able to read with your child at home. Your child can read them to you, and you can ask about the pictures, ask about the different characters within the story, because they are pitched at a level that's appropriate for them. You also will have other books that are sent home. Now, these sorts of storybooks are books that the children have chosen and they would like them to be read to. So you can read with your child, you can get that exposure to the language and the pictures and the vocabulary. So there are different types of books that are sent home. Okay, so we also make sure that children have their one-to-one -one time with their adults. So if they're struggling and they're finding something difficult, they have that one-to-one -one time to make sure that they are able to keep up with our programme and be reading by six. That's our main aim, what we want to do here at Life Scout. So, phonics is split into two different sets. You may have seen these words before. Sound, we have 44 sounds within our English language. They're all up here for you. Split into consonants and split into vowels. We also have graphemes. Now, graphemes are how different sounds are written within English. So, you can see here that we have our sound A. This is A as in play. This is A as in cake, and this is A as in snail. There is one sound, but there are three different ways to be able to spell that word. And that's why English is so complex, it's so difficult, because it has a really complex alphabetic code. It means that children are able to read these sounds and know what they look like in print, and then they're able to write them and be able to access different parts of the curriculum. For example, in year one and year two, they might read the word play, Later on, in year three, year four, they know that this A in crayon, they can sound out that word and they can blend it together as well. So as I said, there are 44 sounds from 26 letters, but there are over 150 graphemes, are over 150 words and ways that those words can be spelt. And it's one of the most complex codes in the world. And that's why it makes English as notoriously difficult to read, because it's presented in so many different ways. So what we're going to do, we're going to have a little bit of a practice, my turn, your turn, of some of our sounds. Now if you feel confident you can join in, if you don't feel confident I'm sure your children will join in as well. Our consonants are split into bouncy sounds and stretchy sounds. Okay, so if we have an example, is a stretchy sound, but is a bouncy sound. Okay, so we do my turn, your turn, children you can join in with me. We have oh. You will notice that we have something called pure sounds when we are sounding out the sounds. This is M, the letter name is M. Some of us may be tempted to say M or S or V. 
When we're sounding out the sounds with the children, we try and keep them as pure as possible. Let's try our bouncy sounds. Buh. You will see here there's two in one box. We have curl around the caterpillar and kangaroo. Same sound, same phony, different graphemes. D. 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 J. J. So you will see here, sometimes the children will come home and say, they're special friends. That means you have two letters together, the A and the Y, that make the A sound. That's what special friends means if your children come home. These are your set twos and set ones. Um, there's a pronunciation guide that I'm going to text out after this that has a really, it's really gorgeous little girl who's doing my turn, your turn, so you can practice that at home or doing it with your children because they are so, so confident with them as well. When your children are in reception, we teach the fact that this squiggle means a s sound and this a means an a, this, um, sorry, this shape here means an a sound. So they're exposed to these freezes, we call them the mnemonics to try and help the children to spell them. When we teach letter formation, we have lots of different phrases. You may have heard of mazy mountain mountain. We may have heard of around the apple and down the leaf. These handwriting phrases help the children to form their letters really confidently. When the children move up into year two, they get this grapheme chart, which is a little bit more complex. And here, we teach all of our set three sounds. So they already know A is in play, but then we teach A as in cake and A as in snail. So they see the same sound in different graphemes. They become more confident. I'm not going to make you do all of those. But this is going to, um, will be sent home with you as well. It's also, if you go into your, sorry, I've this one. In your phonics pack here, it says more resources. They can also find your complex B sound chart in there as well. So you can see that too. It's also in the front of all of your children's books that they bring home. So this chart hopefully will give you a bit more information about what it needs to look like. Once the children have been able to sound out all of their letters, then they're able to blend them together. So they know they have the s and a and t that makes the word sat. Have any of you heard of Fred? Possibly? Yeah, so Fred, Fred is our friend and Fred speaks in sounds. So we might say, um, Fred says get our u and n ch. And the children will go, oh, Fred's saying it's lunchtime. Or Fred might say, go and get your coat. And they think, oh, Fred says we need to go and get our coat. So Fred is our friend who speaks in the graphemes and the phonemes within words to help children to blend them together, to help children to be able to read them. So you can play some Fred games at home if you'd like. They say, you say the word as Fred says. So Fred would say, at. Ask your child to repeat them. Can they jump in? If you say, at. Do they go, oh, cat? Or do you need to repeat it again? So then you put the word followed by the whole word, like at, cat. And you can break that down for any word that you come across. You probably do umbrella if you wanted to, because it all breaks down into those phonemes that you're able to sound them out. OK, so here's an example. Can we have some oh, uh, inch? What would you like to oh, a? Let's put on your coat. And it's helping the children to know that we are blending those words together. Those sounds together make that word. Okay. Um, we teach spelling using Fred fingers. So here we've got three fingers. We might say the word is mat. We need an m and an at and a t to make the word mat. Or we could say if we wanted the word, I don't know, coat, we'd need a coat. They spell using their Fred fingers. Our main phrase that we use here is three with me, four at home. So the children read their phonics book three separate times with us in school. 
The first time they read it is for accuracy. So can they decode those words? Do they recognize if they see, um, for example, up here, Robin Hood up here? Can they read all those words for accuracy? So lived, told, out, little, can they read those words by sound of the <coughs> The second read, we think, can they read it fluently? Children need to be able to read around 90 words a minute to be able to comprehend, to be able to understand what they're reading. So we build up their fluency by seeing those words again. Then they read it for a third time. Do they understand what they're reading? Do they know that our characters in Robin Hood are being um, friends with the merry men? They kind of build that comprehension, that understanding around the text. Then we send it home with you so they can read it and they can enjoy it at home. So the idea behind that is they've read it three separate times, the fourth time they're able to read it at home with you, to share that with you, to share that love of that story. So what do they bring home? The phonic book that's linked to their level, they read that to you. You might have, a, or you will have as well, a book bag book, which is also linked to their phonics level, they can read that to you as well. And then they have a story book that you can read with them. So read, with, read to you, read to you, and you can read to them. And it's making sure we're developing that love of stories as well. To be honest, these two, they can be quite dry. So as much as we can, we're making it so it's linked to the children's ability, it's linked to their level, but this one they can enjoy with you. On the sheet that I've given out to your handout here, there are lots and lots of tutorials. Um, they did some incredible work during lockdown to help children to access learning from home. The brilliant thing about these videos is you can literally just click play and it's a lady who is delivering a lesson and they can join in, which is absolutely fantastic. So there's lots and lots of free video tutorials that are all on this well, the link that you can watch as well. So what can you do? Use the pure sound, not the, not the letter name, so saying mm, not M or M. Use Fred Talk to read and spell those words. If you're doing some cooking, you can go and say, go and get the k, uk, b, uk, and see whether they can work out that that is. Listen to your child read every single day. I know that you're so busy. I have my little one at home, and the last thing I want to do with a busy day of work is sit and read with him. But please, please, it underpins absolutely everything. If our children are hearing words, if they're seeing you read, if they're reading to their teddy bears, it does change absolutely everything. Read stories to your child every day. So letting them read, you reading to them as well. Um, and just enjoy what I know is not on here, but enjoy words, enjoy stories. Picking out things from the environment as well is really, really helpful. Um, online resources, there's a parents page on your handout. There's a Facebook group if you're that way inclined. Um, there's also some free ebooks for home reading on Oxford Owl. It's on the handout. All you need to do is sign up. There are so many books on there, hundreds of books that are all linked to children, um, children's interests, children's abilities, and they can read them online. They can use an iPad, they could use a tablet, they could even use your phone to do that as well. So that's another opportunity that's there as well. I know I've given you a really quick whistle stop tour. Does anybody have any questions or are feeling brave at this point? Have any questions? If not, then you're more than welcome to stay around afterwards if you want to ask me one to one afterwards. If you have anything you want to say or kind of join in. Um, a last quote from Michael Mupergo on the board that says, Reading feeds the imagination, it expands horizons and offers new and exciting ways of seeing and making sense of our lives and the world around us. Reading really does underpin absolutely everything and I'm so glad that you've had your support for coming in today. I'm also going to be running some coffee mornings as well, um, which you're more than welcome to attend, which will be nice where we can get a bit more of a feel for what we do and how we can support our children further at this point. So thank you so much for coming. If anyone has any questions, please feel free. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.